Number 27. The length and width of a rectangular room are measured to be 3.955 plus or minus 0 0.005 meters and 3.050 plus or minus 0 0.005 meters. Calculate the area of the room and its uncertainty in square meters. Okay, first thing, let's just draw a uh, quick picture. So, so we have a rectangular room. And one side measures 3.955 plus or minus 0 0.005 meters. And the other side measures 3.050 plus or minus 0 0.005 meters. Okay, great. So it's asking us to calculate the area and its uncertainty. So let's just focus on the area first. So the area of a rectangle is length times width. Now, in order, now what values do you use in this equation? Well, you're, you're going to use the measurement values or the base values of your measurement with its associated uncertainty. So meaning you're going to be using this number because that's the measurement and this number because that is the measurement. So let's plug them in, into the area equation. So area is equal to 3.955, and that is in meters, multiplied by, I'll just use a parenthesis, 3.050 um, meters. Okay, great. So now the area is just equal to the uh, multiplication of these two. So 3.955 times 3.050, and the answer works out to be 12.06275, and we're going to round that, right, to four significant figures. Why? Because each of the measured values has four significant figures in them. Okay, great. So this answer will be approximately 12.06. Um, and that's meters squared, right, since those were the units. So that's the area. Okay. Now I have to figure out its uncertainty. But remember, uh, well, they didn't ask for percent uncertainty, so they actually want to know the actual measured uncertainty. Um, but the only way to do this is through the percent uncertainty. Okay, so whenever you have to find the total uncertainty between a couple of measurements, like, well, a couple, it could be a few, right? Two, three, four, five, whatever. Um, you have to think through percent uncertainty. So the formula is this. So the total percent uncertainty is equal to the uncertainty, the percent uncertainty that is, um, percent uncertainty of the first measurement plus the percent uncertainty of the second measurement plus the percent uncertainty of the third measurement, etc. So we only have two measurements in this problem. So that we only need two. So let's first work with, um, so let's find, uh, let's call the length the first measurement. Okay, this will be number one. Okay, so the percent, I'll give myself a little room here. So the percent uncertainty of the length, right, is equal to the uncertainty of the measurement divided by the measurement itself multiplied by 100. So the percent uncertainty of the length will be equal to the uncertainty in the measurement, and they told it us uh, it was 0 0.005 meters. The measurement itself was found to be 3.955 meters, and that's multiplied by 100. So this is fairly straightforward, percent uncertainty of the length. So let's do that. So we got 0 0.005 divided by 3.955, and then multiply that by 100. So we get a value of 0 0.126. And we have to round that now to one significant figure because of the one sig fig in the um, numerator there. So we have 0.1%. Great. Now we have to do the same thing for the second measurement that I'm going to highlight here in gold. So here now the percent uncertainty of the second measurement, or the width in this problem, would be the uncertainty associated with the width divided by the measurement itself of the width multiplied by 100. Okay, so the percent uncertainty of the width is going to equal the uncertainty associated with the width, which was 0 0.005 meters, 
divided by the measurement itself for the width, which was 3.050 meters, multiplied by 100. So the percent on, uh, uncertainty associated with the width is equal to now, take out your calculator again, 0 0.005 divided by 3.050. Multiply that by 100, and it comes out to be 0 0.1639, etc. And we have to round this guy to uh, one sig fig, again, because there's one sig fig in the numerator. So it works out to be 0 0.2, right? 0.2%. Okay, great. So we found the percent uncertainty associated with the length and the percent uncertainty associated with the width. Now we can finally find the total percent uncertainty associated with both the length and the width. And the reason why we need both the length and the width is because we calculated the area. And the area included the length and the width. So the percent uncertainty of, of the length right, was 0.1%. And the percent uncertainty associated with the width was 0.2%. So adding those together, we get the total percent uncertainty to be 0.3%. Okay. Now we can write our area with its associated percent uncertainty. So let's take a look at what that looks like down here on the left. So it'd be 12.06 meters squared plus or minus 0.3%. Okay, well, 0.3% of what? Well, 0.3% of the measurement. So that would be the answer if they wanted it in, um, they wanted you to calculate the area and its percent uncertainty. But they uh, asked us to calculate the area and the uncertainty, not the percent. So no big deal. All we need to do is another calculation. So recall the formula, right, that we have written 14 times on the right-hand side. Well, not 14, right? <laughs> but a few times. Percent uncertainty with a measurement is equal to the uncertainty of the measurement itself divided by the measurement multiplied by 100. So we calculated the percent uncertainty, the total percent uncertainty, to be 0.3%. Now what I want to do is I want to actually find the value of that uncertainty. And in order to do that, I need to know the mass. Uh, excuse me, the measurement. And we do, right? The measurement was area. So we plug in the area value down here, okay, in meters squared, and that will then be multiplied by 100. And when I do this math, it will tell me the um, uncertainty in meters squared. So let's cross multiply. So 0 0.3 times 12.06. So this works out to be a value of 3.618. Right, really I should only be using one sig fig here, so I'm gonna just backtrack slightly, okay? So it should be four, okay? Equals then the uncertainty multiplied by 100. So just divide out the 100, just divide out the 100. And now your uncertainty is equal to four divided by 100, right? And we can just move the decimal place, you don't even need to really put it into the calculator. So the uncertainty is 0 0.04 uh, meters uh, squared, because those are the units now in our formula. Great. So now what I'm going to do, instead of writing my uh, measurement with its associated percent uncertainty, now I'm going to write my measurement with its associated uncertainty. So 0 0.04 meters squared. Okay. And that would be the final answer. Notice something else, and this should be the case, right? Notice how my answer, uh, in terms of uncertainty, goes out to the hundredths place. And notice the value of the area also goes out to the hundredths place. That should be the case. And if you go back and look at any other problems, you'll notice that they're all consistent. That's a good way to check, all right? So thank you guys for tuning in. Hope this helped. Please subscribe if it did. I'll see you guys next time.